Photoshop has two primary ways to edit images. Destructive, which would be anything under the image menu and something like auto color and auto tone, which can get you there quickly, or auto contrast. I tend to like to try all three, but those settings are permanent to this image. So if it goes too far or does things I don't like, I can't go back after I've closed and saved the file. If I go to my history panel and stretch it, I can undo all of that by clicking on the open state, what it looked like when I opened it. And I'll click the icon for history to get that out of my way. The second way to make destructive edits under image adjustments and using something like levels, which is powerful, but simpler than curves, which is more powerful than levels, but more dangerous. They both have similar tasks. I tend to start people with levels. And what levels means is color levels in an image. So if I look at levels, I can see the peaks and valleys where the data lies in this photo. And at this end, I have the dark data. So I could pull the dark data into where it starts. And if I turn preview off and on, I've just improved contrast. If I want whiter whites, I could pull the lights in, the light end. And now I've got whiter whites, but I am destroying precious highlight detail. And if I were to click OK and save and close this document, I have permanently thrown away pixels that I can never get back if I save over the original. So in history, I'll go back to open again. And a more editable and far safer way to make adjustments is by using the Adjustments panel or down at the bottom of your Layers panel are non-destructive edits. These are actually the same tools. You could do it through an icon or you could choose it from the bottom of the Layers menu and you'll see if you pause for two seconds that it's New Fill or Adjustment layer. As you surf over adjustments, most everything you find in the Destructive menu, Image, Adjustments, and These Items, is here under the Adjustments panel. Brightness and Contrast, Levels, Curves, Exposure, which is great if you just didn't get the right developing lightness or darkness on this image. So if I use Levels like I did before, this time, it adds a levels layer. So I see a similar dialogue with the peaks and valleys for where the data lies, the darks in the image, the lights in the image, and there's a pretty broad range of light data. Actually, this is known as a mid-key image. It has shadow detail, mid-tone, everything between light and dark detail, and highlight detail. But the shadow is a bit weak, so if I pull this little triangle in to where the data starts, I could see before and after by turning the icon next to Levels, where it says Indicates Layer Visibility, that eye icon can go off and on, and the image has already gotten a lot better. The benefit to non-destructive editing or editing with layers is it's like a clear piece of acetate over top of the image, which makes a correction or makes a global change, but it can be turned on and off and if I come back later today or tomorrow or next week or next month, it's always editable. Nothing, no pixels are harmed in the making of this correction. The original locked background layer stays intact. So when I save this file, it's going to force me to do File, Save As. Even though I chose Save, a JPEG, the compressed format, cannot contain layers. So I will save this as Hydrant End, and it forces a Photoshop document, a PSD, and the format is Photoshop. So I will click Save, and I always leave Maximize Compatibility on. If someone wants to open this with an older version of Photoshop, they will be able to with this on. So when I click OK, I could do further non-destructive edits. I could make the overall midtones, everything between light and dark, darker or lighter, 
I like a little darker on this image. And I could do more things. I could boost individual colors or vibrance. So back in the Adjustments panel, I can look for Vibrance, which has been there for a few versions, and I just love it for pops of color. So in Vibrance, it's a lot safer than Saturation. As I dial Vibrance up, the sky got richer blue. I could see more of this aqua, the very light aqua green color. And if I click the eye icon on the Vibrance Adjustment layer that Photoshop just made, here's before, here's after. I really mostly see it in the blue and the reflection of the blue sky in the water. But I might want to make more special effects in this. Maybe the beautiful blue sky is distracting from the subject of my photo. So I could make more muted colors by painting away parts of the vibrance so it only applies to the hydrant. And I'm not going to go that deep in this video. The goal was to expose you to edits that are editable after you close the file and safe because they never destroy any pixels or trash any data. They're all on top of your background layer. So this has been a tour of using adjustment layers instead of image adjustments or items under the image menu to make color corrections that let you go back and change your mind later and don't harm your original shot.